So I will start with a relatively provocative question. Who has already seen this image right there? Okay, so you probably recognize it. It's a picture of the black hole in the movie Interstellar. Uh, 2014 just celebrated its 10th birthday, so um, I encourage you to watch this movie if uh, not already done. Uh, and I realized that since my talk is rather long, I remember that probably you know time is relative, and I'm currently closer to the black hole than you, so 10 minutes for me is not 10 minutes for you. <laughs> 10 minutes for me is actually 25 minutes for you, so please uh, correct the timing accordingly. <laughs> anyway, so black holes are fascinating objects. They are everywhere in the pop culture. You probably have already heard about Schwarzes Loch at least once. But it's also a pretty mysterious object. Um, not everyone knows what it is, and although I'm doing my PhD on that topic myself, don't know what it is neither. But hopefully we will try to understand it a little better this evening. So if we want to understand what black holes are, we need to go back a little in time. I will not tell you who that guy is. Uh, you're German, you probably know uh, him pretty much uh, already. So Albert Einstein in 1915 wrote a brand new theory for gravity. So gravity is this uh, force that is preventing you from randomly flying in the room right now. It's what keeps you down on Earth. And he had this marvelous idea that gravity is actually the result that massive objects, such as a star, for instance, um, massive object, they can bend space and time. And so when they're bending the fabric, the tissue of space, they are carving this kind of cavity, this kind of hollow. And when an object uh, would encounter this uh, region right there, would start orbiting around it. So this is why planets are orbiting around stars, for instance. But this theory is full of super complicated equations that I myself don't understand, and that at the time were not solved. It's more like a recipe to study the universe, but you need to solve them first. And uh, Einstein could not do this at first. And this guy is very cool because he has a f very funny mustache, first of all. <laughs> Uh, but he's also the first guy who actually found a solution to the Einstein equations. Uh, and he really did it in the, the more hardcore way you could possibly think about. Because first of all, he was the first one. He did that in just a few months after Einstein wrote the theory. So this is already less than the time it took me to get a terrible grade at the, in, during my master on general relativity. But it was enough for him to contribute to that uh, theory with awfully complicated equations that I wish I would have never go through, <laughs> while serving for the German army. So he was basically in the trenches. He was shooting people during office hour. <laughs> and when he had a bit of uh, time off, he was uh, solving the most complicated equation that physics ever had. He wrote a letter. He sent it to Einstein in December 1915. It got published, and he died a few weeks later. So if you want to study the universe, this is the way the universe is thanking you back. <laughs> OK, but this is uh, pretty cool, but it's not um, solving the initial question we had, which is, aber was zum Teufel ist ein schwarzes Loch? <laughs> and uh, to do so, we uh, have to ask a very famous German physicist, uh, Thomas Müller, <laughs> is a professor at the Bayern Institute for Experimental Science. <laughs> And today, uh, Professor Müller wants to know, how can I make a soccer ball escape the Earth gravity forever? So to do so, he's making some experiments, a physical experiment. So he's shooting the ball. The ball gets up and then gets down on Earth. So apparently, the experiment is a failure. So he's shooting the ball slightly um, more, with more strength. So uh, it seems like the ball starts orbiting around the Earth. Interesting, but it's still not really escaping. So he's shooting really hard, and he realized that when he's shooting the ball at 11 kilometers per second, the ball, it's enough for the ball to actually leave Earth forever. And so this 11 kilometers per second is what we call the escape velocity of Earth. So it's the speed at which you need to kick an object for it to never come back. Um, for moon, it's slightly less because the moon is less massive. For the sun, it's much more because the, the sun is, is a much heavier object. Where a black hole is simply an object whose escape velocity is more than the speed of light. The speed of light is 300,000 um, kilometers per second. It's like the absolute limit in the universe, like nothing can travel faster than this. So it basically means that it's an object 
from which nothing can escape, including light itself. So here we have the, one of the two only real image we have of a black hole so far. It's uh, from um, um, M87 star, it's from a very distant galaxy, it's a supermassive black hole. What you see around is uh, the accretion disk, so it's a very hot plasma of gas. It's orbiting around the black hole just like planets are orbiting around the sun, but it's slowly, slowly um, falling down into the black hole, and the donkel part, the dark part at the center, is the, the shadow, so the region where actually the light cannot escape. Cool. So uh, usually when you attend a talk about uh, uh, black holes, uh, you go home and what you remember of is that everything that a black hole can do is basically attracting stuff, it's swallowing stars and so on, and that nothing gets out of it. But actually nothing is um, uh, less correct than that. Uh, to understand why, uh, I will ask you to remember of the last time you had a terrible hangover. <laughs> Uh, so when you're drinking a bit too much alcohol, you're drinking, drinking, and at some point, you reach that point of no return when you realize you're about to throw up. Um, this is what we call in science the booze backfire principle, <laughs> which tells you that uh, when too much stuff tries to go in, at some point, starts, or stuff also starts to flow out. <laughs> And this is true also for black holes. Um, black holes are also having hangover from time to time. So here is like an artistic rendering of a black hole. It's not a real image, it's just an image. Uh, you see the accretion disk around, the gas is falling into the black hole, and a part of that gas is indeed falling into the black hole and will be lost forever, but not all of the gas. Actually, there is a fraction, a certain quantity of this accretion disk that is going up because of the magnetic fields around the black hole. And when they are going up, they are shot, they're ejected, and they're forming this kind of chimney-looking structures, these jets right there, which are going up at nearly the speed of light, and they propagate out of the black hole region. So do we see this in reality? Actually, yes. So this is a picture of a very distant, supermassive black hole somewhere in the universe. It's at the center there, this kind of bright halo is actually the, the supermassive black hole. It's accreting gas, so the gas is flowing in and in and in, it's being um, accreted. And because of this thing I said about the magnetic structure, the black hole is actually also creating these two jets there. So these two jets are really going at nearly the speed of light, and they are propagating out um, to uh, propagating into the empty space and decelerating. And when they decelerate, you see they are forming these kind of lobe structures. Uh, and, and this is something that we can see uh, with radio telescopes. So this is not something you would see with your naked eyes. This is something that you can see with um, ground-based big radio dish. You can uh, uh, have somewhere, like we have some in Europe, and there is a station here in, uh, in Hamburg, actually, of a, 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 a radio telescope called LOFAR, you can make these kind of images and you really see these kind of big things uh, pretty much everywhere in the sky. Uh, but the cool thing about this picture is that it's pretty hard to tell how large it is, right? It, it could be the size of the solar system, uh, there seems to be galaxies in the background, but it's pretty hard to tell because they could be very far away, so you don't really know what's the size, what's the width of this image. So just as a reminder, so we live on a planet, uh, well, I'm sorry, we'll have to assume it's round. Um, the planet itself is orbiting around the sun, and the Sun is itself part of a much bigger structure that we call the Milky Way. The Milky Way is a uh, hundred thousand light years across, so it's pretty big, right? Um, I will not try to tell you how much kilometers this is. Um, light travel 300,000 kilometers per second. Um, there is 3,600 seconds in, uh, in each hour, so yeah, thank you. Time is relative. Um, uh, so this is pretty large, um, and this is like the size of the Milky Way. So the black hole at the center has the size of the solar system, but these jets exiting the galaxy are propagating on millions of light years, actually. So you could fit 20 times our galaxy there. Okay. And this is what I'm doing my PhD on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>